best dream. I dreamt that Canada had finally abolished the Senate and everything was just perfect. <sighs> Why can't it be real? It's going to put me in such a bad mood for the rest of the day. Hello. Welcome to a place many people have heard about, yet very few people have seen. I'm Senator Patrick Brazo, and I'm pleased to have the opportunity to share information with you on Canada's upper chamber, the Senate. I mean, maybe back in 1867 it made sense to have a Senate when Canada just had its confederation, there's all these different regions divided, they need their little representation in the House, but nowadays it just doesn't make any sense. At the time of our nation's birth, the Fathers of Confederation decided that Canada should have its own parliament to enact its laws. They want to ensure that everything to be decided upon should be carefully deliberated by not one, but two houses of parliament. So they created the upper chamber, which is the Senate, and the lower chamber, which is the House of Commons. The Queen, represented by the Governor General, the Senate, and the House of Commons, make up Canada's parliament. All those years ago, it was Canada's first Prime Minister, Sir John A. Macdonald, who called the Senate a place of sober second thought. There are a lot of popular misconceptions about the Senate and the role of Senators. First and foremost, I'm living proof that this is not just a place for, shall we say, people with white hair, although I'm getting there. Now, Senator, oftentimes people, they don't know enough about the Senate, and, and they make jokes and they say that senators are all old and senators are just a bunch of old political cronies and I come in your office and you're actually in a rocking chair next to a fireplace. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're kind of living up the stereotype here. <laughs> uh, could I have a turn in the chair? You could. Yeah, right. oh. absolutely. Right. Don't wake me. <laughs> I'm a senator. <laughs> oh my. I got to work 65 days a year. Now, when you retire, I guess Mr. Harper will put in another conservative. Mm -hmm. So, he must be chomping at the bit to see you go. Every now and then, there's a prime minister knock on the door, come in and go, How you feeling today, Bill? No, You're he looking comes, sick? He, he comes in here and he puts, he doesn't shake my hand, he puts his his uh, thumb on my wrist. <laughs> <laughs> so, Harper comes in, he's like, uh, How are you today? <laughs> Good to see you, Bill. <laughs> There are certain criteria which must be met in order to become a senator. They must be a Canadian citizen of at least 30 years of age. They must own property in their province or territory and must reside in the province or territory they represent. Senator, what do you like most about being a senator, honestly, now? Uh, but I like most about being You're a senator. You're taking way too long to answer no, that no, one, no, I, I tell got, you. I gotta think of this. There's, the there's, there's a lot of things I like about being a senator. A lot of people might know about this. But there's an emergency button here. You hit that button, and within a few seconds, emergency personnel and security will arrive. So if I so press that button, security's going to come in? Definitely, definitely, definitely. No, you can't press the button. I'm going in for it. I'm going to put it. Come on, buddy. You can't press the button, Mike. I want to see, I want to see a real mountain. My own of the car security, you don't get up and behind me. I'm doing it. I mean, half the province is wanting to get rid of it. Stephen Harper wants to reform it. So now we just got to ask ourselves the question, does Canada really need a Senate? And the answer to that is no. We need to say goodbye to all this bicameral bull and stop pretending that we need two chambers to do exactly what one chamber is capable of doing. Examine what the Senate actually does on a day-to-day -day basis. They have these committees like finance, energy, human affairs, etc. Okay. Senator Manning. Um, do orders of the Eternal Economy Commission, uh, Committee, I'm sorry, uh, supersede the workings of 
a committee? Uh, they're, they're, they're not in order. Just answer that. That, that, that. that would have been in order of the Senate because the minutes of the Internal Economy Committee are adopted by the Senate. No, I just uh, okay. again. Uh, uh, thank uh, you. I've, I've heard enough. Uh, I'd like to ask a question. No, it's. I'm sorry. I've, I've, I've heard enough. What? Yeah, it's a point of order, and uh, on points of order, after I've heard the views of enough people to make up my mind, then it's. You up can't to even me ask a ahead. question here. I, I, I'm sorry, but I, I have heard. What in the hell are we at here? We can't ask a question. So um, I, I challenge. Hold on now, hold on now, Mr. Chair. No, I, I'm just, no, just asking a simple question no, here. I, you can you ask the question. I'm after a member of this committee. You can ask and I want to ask a question. After we, after you hear the ruling, you can. Sir, I want to ask a question after you hear, uh, in I, regards I, to the... Uh, after uh, you hear the ruling, you're out of order now, sir. In regards to what he just said, I want to ask you, a question. You're still yeah. out of order. And I, I, I'd, I'd like to add another to point, ask, Chair, to that question is that... I mean, the this is out of hand by the No, the no I have the floor here for a minute. No, you're, you, you, you are no, out of order. No, I have the floor here. No, you don't have the floor anymore. I'm sorry. Well, I'm going to say it anyway. No, you're not. Now, while these are nice and official and well-intentioned, what's the point of actually having them around? I mean, last time I checked, I'm pretty sure the House of Commons had their own people running their own little committees. What was it called again? Oh, right. The Cabinet. And then we have departments that back up the Cabinet ministers and do pretty much the exact same things the Senators do. Except while the Senators just file reports about what needs to be done, the Cabinets actually go out and do it. Oh, yes, I am. No. I asked, I'm asking please, the question. Please cut off as, as mic. He is out of order. You have no right to do that, Chair. Yes, That's enough of that. Yes, I do. And don't it's shout at me. I'll the, shout at you the, as the, much the, as the I chair, want. On a point of order, on, on, a, po on a point of order. Recognize my colleague. On a, no, I won't. I'm sorry. You're out of order. The chair is entitled to hear as much as the chair The chair has lost the confidence of the committee. The chair has lost the confidence of the committee. I'm sorry. He's, he's out of order. You're not a chair. And, and you're out of order as well. I am not out of order. Don't. Don't. Yes. Thank you. Shut all the questions. Shut me up. No, you can shut keep shouting, shouting and, oh, and people will watch you, but you're out of order. He is out of order. He's still out of order. The ruling of the Internal Economy Commission, and we're trying to take a vote here on point of order and the most of The second important job of the Senate is to look over bills that have been passed by the House of Commons and make sure they're acceptable before they can become legislation. Sort of like spell checking a document before it's ready to be printed. I mean, Sure, the editing process is important, but do we really need 105 editors looking over and revising this stuff? You know, it's a bit of a slap in the face to the members of Parliament, pretty much saying that even though we elected you and chose you to represent us and make good decisions for us in Parliament, we want these unelected representatives to come in and check up on you. Oh, and by the way, in the official Canadian order of precedence, they rank farther ahead of you. And they're making almost as much as you. I can't ask the question, but something clarifies the there, there is not a vote before you, sir. There is a question for the chair to rule on as to I whether the point of order or not. Answer the question. As a member of this committee, I think I've did at least deserve respect to the answer the question. I, I, I'm sorry, not you, you have I mean, to you will have to You will have to wait your turn. You will have to wait your turn and abide by the rules. Now, you, you've had the f you, you, you've had the f you've had the floor three times. You can shout all you like, but you're not going to get an answer. Fine. Does the uh, ruling of the Internal Economy Committee all supersede the rulings of this committee here? That's a simple question with a simple answer. We don't need the argument. I'd like to answer. You know, maybe if the Senate was a hard-working stand-up group of individuals, then people wouldn't mind having them around so much. But it's so hard for us to make sure that these guys are motivated and that they're doing the best work that they're capable of.
They stay in office until they're 75. Their pay is guaranteed, and the only really real requirement of their job is not to miss consecutive sessions of Parliament. Welcome to Canada's Senate. Order! Order! Unelected. Unaccountable. Stacked with liberals. Stephen Harper is pushing for change. Term limits. Senate elections. It's a plan for change in a place that needs it. Still, Stefan Dion's liberals are blocking change, fighting term limits. Why is Stefan Dion protecting liberal entitlements? Will he ever be a leader? This week, the British House of Commons voted overwhelmingly in favour of a proposal to elect the uh, House of Lords 100%. Uh, your thoughts on that in context of your Senate reform bill from last year? Well, as you know, we have two uh, important Senate reform bills before Parliament right now. Uh, one is uh, is a bill to shorten the length and the length of senators' terms from the outrageous uh, maximum of 45 years to eight years. That bill has now been in the Senate for 10 months. Uh, I would encourage the senators to uh, to hurry up their uh, detailed analysis of this two-paragraph piece of legislation. Um, but I think the uh, I think the Senate's uh, reaction, and I also think the uh, that's Bill S4, by the way. I think the Senate's reaction, as well as the interesting development in the House of Lords. Uh, indicates why we brought forward Bill C-43, which is to provide an electoral process for future senators. Uh, I hope Parliament will give that serious consideration. I think uh, we all understand that in the uh, 21st century, uh, if a uh, legislative body is going to be serious, it has to be elected. Uh, that's what we want to see. And um, since the Senate missed the 20th century, I'd encourage them to skip over that entirely and jump right into the 21st and uh, get on with elections. I think an unelected Senate strikes many people as an anomaly in a modern age, but think about it a different way. Um, and this is said as someone who's fought two elections and run for election, and I'm not necessarily the most promising guy to run for political office, but a system where we are able to appoint really great people who might not be able to win an election. I mean, there's a case to be made, in other words, a theoretical case for an unelected Senate. And I know as a practical matter, and I think Canadians don't know this, that, that this Senate, this imperfect institution we've got, does a very important job of catching our mistakes. This is said to you as an MP who often has to vote a lot of legislation fast, but sometimes stuff slips through. And then the Senate catches it. And that's what the Senate does. That's when we talk about sober second thought. That's what they're doing. Could I raise a point, Chair? We decided on March 2nd to create a steering committee of three members. And I think that rescinding an earlier decision on the same issue would require a two-thirds vote, and I don't believe you have that. No, that's not an order. And well, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just pointing it out that that's what it requires, is a two-thirds vote to rescind a previous motion. And that's exactly what we just did, and it requires two-thirds. You don't have two-thirds, so that motion fails. No, that's not true. Uh, well, Senator Kenny, it is true. No. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, Senator Kenny, but you're, <coughs> you're wrong, Chair. On this matter, you cannot rescind a motion. You cannot Day. rescind a, Chair, uh, think, uh, a motion. You. In committee, there's detailed study of proposed legislation and in-depth investigation of policy matters on issues that affect Canadians in their day-to-day -day lives. Uh, I, I, I believe I can bring some harmony back to the. No, meeting. good luck to you, by, Senator by Day. By proposing a motion. Uh, uh, with respect to the various border uh, visits during the summer. Senator Day, we haven't I finished with the question have, uh, of whether I, this motion failed or not. Have, uh, hey, you can't talk by this, Senator Day. Senator this is Day an important has question. Floor. No, I had the floor. Oh, you required a two-thirds and you didn't get it. That's so this motion true. failed. That's not true. Well, can we have you the can't clerk just say give us that. the facts on that? Can we no. You can't just Before say that, Senator Kenny. That's not right. I did just say it. Well... <laughs> You, know, you have recourse on the floor of the, of the I Chamber. will take it. I Go will take it. it to the floor of the Senate. That, you can I, bet I, on it. But first, I want to challenge your ruling so that we have a vote on this. So I want to be fine. clear what all members of this committee feel about this. Well, Thank you. Good. These ridiculously low standards allowed the Andy Thompson fiasco to happen. Now, this guy would miss Parliament all the time, but he just made sure never to do it consecutively. Once everybody found out, he blamed it all on health reasons.
But why was nobody checking up on this guy for 14 years in the first place? It basically proves that the Senate has absolutely no accountability. I mean, someone working at McDonald's gets checked up more than the Senate workers do, and they're definitely not pulling in 132 grand every year. What's, what's right. the report say about the expenses? Well, some of them quite high. For example, the one individual that served, I think, very, very little time within the Senate. And you look at the expenses and everything that caused on him. And it, it just goes on and on. Some of the work that, is a, uh, that they say have been done, and we look at it this way, that some of the work that the Senate done, you don't need to be a senator to do this type of work. We have many, many people in the country that can do that type of work without having to be a burden on the Canadian taxpayer. All right, Senator Duffy, respond to this. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Stoffer points out, you know, conservative Norman Atkins resigned in June and charged $7,000 per day for the 26 days he attended. What, what do you say to these numbers? Uh, well, first of all, Norman Atkins wasn't a conservative. He was a progressive conservative. He wasn't part of the government caucus. But w w there's not a single number Peter's given there. It's all baffle gab. It's just in a diversion to try and take the public's attention away from the by-elections that are coming up on Monday in which the NDP, I hope, in Nova Scotia are going to be trounced because they're fakers. Peter Stoffer, you know, stands up, I'm on the side of the Mounties, I'm on the side of the military, and then he votes against them every time out. I mean, this guy is, should be getting a, a, a Hollywood award for acting because that's what he is. He's an actor. He's a very amiable fake. Now, expenses. Peter Stoffer's expenses in the last year were, uh, I got them here somewhere, $128,000, if my numbers are correct, $128,000. Uh, $1,000.57. If you annualize my quarter of expenses that have come out, we're almost identical. And is he saying that he, every dollar that I spent was not worthwhile reaching out to Canadians? All right. And yet his were? So well, let's put some balance and some fairness. There are all kinds of senators who had much bigger numbers than I did, incumbent liberals who most Canadians have never heard of, who are fantastically more expensive than I was. Okay, but I let take me give them Peter like Stoffer Romeo a chance. Well, let, let me just give him a chance time. to respond. Evan, just a second. Evan, why, did you, why did you put, uh, why did you specifically mention Senator Duffy in your report? We also mentioned liberals as well. We picked up, we, 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 we could have named every Sharon single Parsh one of them. There? We mentioned other members of parliament from this both the, the liberals and the conservative party. It's no, a scam. Okay, let, let me just let, let you know the rules of the game here. Senator, for God's sakes, and nobody knows this better than you, just let, give Mr. Stoffer a chance to respond to that. He said these are fake numbers and it's used just to, some no, smoke no, for the what bylaws. What's, is, the, is number, what's the number you can numbers. defend? Well, the reality well, is, oh, Mr. Duffy, if you wish, Peter. sir, a good maritimer, sir, allows one person to speak and the other should listen. So I'll speak minutes, and then Peter. you can listen if you wish. You had the first five minutes. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Stoffer, and then we'll get back to you in a second. Senator, go ahead. Mr. Duffy, you accused me about my expenses, and my expenses are for the public record. But, sir, I got elected. I have to respond to 91,000 constituents in my writing. You were appointed by a person that said they would never appoint uh, senators into the Senate. The, the Prime Minister once again uh, when he said an appointed Senate is a relic of the 19th century. Now, Mr. Speaker, many provincial leaders in this country support the abolition of the Senate. So let me ask the Prime Minister seriously, is he willing to open up a dialogue with provincial leaders regarding the steps that would need to be taken to abolish the Senate. If it's broken, let's abolish it. We have passed that in Senator No, Day no, 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 no. You can't do Senator that, Day. Senator. Thank Senator, you, Mr. a point Chairman. of order. We did not deal you with this issue. You are out of order. You are out of order. You are ignoring, you are I, ignoring I, I, the rules of I'm, the Senate. You've ignored sorry. it twice today. 
This is the second time. I, I'm sorry, this Senator is the Kachet, second time you, you require a two-thirds vote, and I want to have a, I want to have a vote. I want to hear. Kachet, I want to have a vote. I challenge the chair's ruling. You are I challenge of, the chair's ruling. Order. I am not out of order. Yeah. I challenge the chair's ruling. I, I'm, I'm you can, sorry. You're you can deal with me in any way you want, but you're not going to get away with this, chair. This well, is not well, correct. And so I'm challenging the chair, and let's have a vote. I want to have a vote. There's, you shouldn't be afraid of the vote. I, I move no, that the I, I, I brought this up. He just ignored me and went to Senator, Senator Day. Day. Take place in the following dates. Ontario this borders isn't the July Senate 17, committee. 15 to 17, 2009. This is 2009. a bunch of bullies is what this Quebec is. Quebec borders July 20th, 21st, uh, 2009. Senator Day. Maritime borders order, July 22nd, 24th, 2009. British Columbia borders July 29th. Stephen Harper swore that if one day he became prime minister, he would not appoint a single senator. But his democratic principles have changed. Rather than solving these problems, he's made things worse. With failed conservative candidates, party insiders, conservative insiders recently charged for violations of the Elections Act. According to Elections Canada, Conservatives overspent by over a million dollars. You can't trust Stephen Harper's Conservatives. His Conservative Senators vetoed legislation just because the Prime Minister said so. The landmark Climate Change Accountability Act was Canada's only federal climate change legislation. It passed twice through the House of Commons, supported by a majority of two consecutive parliaments, a majority of members of parliament, but the Senate turned around and defeated Bill C-311 with no hearings, no witnesses. It was killed by Stephen Harper's appointed senators. No sober second thought. How can you have sober second thought when what you've got are a bunch of Conservative Party organizers and fundraisers with such obvious conflicts of interest? I like it when light shines on the Canadian Senate because there's no doubt about it, it is a very strange and unique place. And let's face it, it has been a dumping ground for political hacks and bagmen since Mackenzie King was in short pants. We all know it needs reform. So why is it such a big deal that Tory senators killed a bill? I mean, the Senate has killed bills before, right? Well, not really, not like this, because they didn't just kill a bill, they killed a bill without any debate. And that is the entire reason the Senate exists. They are, despite the fact that Mike Duffy is a member, the chamber of sober second thought. And the Tory senators took a bill that had been voted on and passed by a majority of the duly elected members of the House of Commons, the people we actually vote for, and killed it without a debate. To put that in perspective, the last time it happened was the 1930s. Though purportedly declared mentally incompetent by her geriatric psychiatrist last February, it wasn't until this month that her niece told the Senate in this letter obtained by Post Media News. Questions are being raised about how she could go on voting and approving spending in her condition. So we've asked for legal advice on the letter. We've asked for legal advice on like, who signs her, her expense form. In Fairbairn's hometown of Lethbridge, oh, Alberta, people have water, mixed feelings. If she's incompetent, I don't think she should be sitting in the Senate. Well, Wendy, this Twitter spat all started with a Canadian press report that Canada's youngest senator has the worst attendance record in the Senate over the last year. And that story might have passed with little notice, except for the reaction from the senator. I'm Senator Patrick Brazo. Appointed to the Senate just three years ago by Stephen Harper, Patrick Brazo was little known until March of this year. That is when Brazo famously took on Justin Trudeau in a charity boxing match and lost. Justin Trudeau. And Brazo was a loser again in today's story by Jennifer Ditchburn. It said he missed a quarter of all Senate sittings in the past year and 65% of meetings of the Aboriginal Affairs Committee on which he sits. Brazo's reaction came on Twitter, telling reporter Ditchburn, while you smile, Jen, others suffer. Change the D to a B in your last name and we're even. She fired back with, many a person has made fun of my name and the word bitch, but never a Canadian senator. That's a first. Brazo 
had few defenders. It's just reprehensible and uh, I, I think that Mr. Harper should uh, weigh in on this and make it clear that this is not acceptable uh, behaviour. I, I don't know anything about where I haven't seen him for a while. I don't know why he's not here, but you should talk to him. Brazo finally ended the Twitter war with this. I apologize for my comments. They were done because of my personal circumstance regarding your story. But he didn't say what that circumstance was, and his fellow conservatives Senator kept their Brazo. distance. Well, I have no comment uh, specifically about Senator Brazo. I understand he has apologized, and that is a good thing. But all of this only focused attention on Brazo's attendance record, which does not square with his YouTube videos extolling the virtues of participation in the Senate. My message today is one that speaks to the value of becoming actively engaged in Canada's democracy. The future of Canada's Senate is now in the hands of Canada's highest court. The Harper government, which has long promised to reform the Senate, is now asking the Supreme Court to rule on plans to reform the upper chamber and on what is required to abolish it. Our chief political correspondent, Tom Clark, joins me now from Ottawa. Tom, why are they doing this? Well, because nothing's been done on this file for almost a year now, and they feel that the Supreme Court can give it a little bit of a push by taking away any confusion at all about whether Senate reform needs a constitutional amendment or not. The Conservatives believe that it doesn't, that their rather modest changes of limiting terms to nine years and allowing provinces to vote for senators if they want, they think all that can be done by the House of Commons alone. The Liberals, Donna, have been asking for this court reference for six years now, uh, but the Conservatives in the past said no, because that would only produce a constitutional crisis. But to hear the government tell it today, it's the Liberals who were the real problem in all of this by stalling it all. Well, but it's been on the government agenda for years, as you say. So is the opposition really stalling now? Well, they don't like Senate reform at all, but look what Stephen Harper has a majority, and he could easily push Senate reform through the House if he wanted to. He controls it. But the problem isn't the House, it's the Senate, where the bill would go to next. The Conservatives have a majority there, but look, there's a lot of Conservative senators who want absolutely nothing to do with reform. They like their life the way it is right now, and Harper can't control them. But I think there's maybe a diminishing appetite for Senate reform within the government because the Senate simply isn't a problem for Harper anymore. He's appointed uh, a huge number of them. But my guess is, Donna, it's unlikely that the Senate will look any different by the time of the next election than it did when the Conservatives first came to power back in 2006. So status quo for now. Tom Clark in Ottawa, thanks. Patrick Brazo lost his boxing match with Justin Trudeau. Now he's facing another battle with his Senate colleagues. Brazo is one of three senators facing questions about whether they're legitimately claiming a housing allowance. Liberal Senator Mac Harb was an Ottawa MP for 15 years before he was appointed to the Senate. Although he owns several properties in Ottawa, including a condo unit in this building, he now claims his principal residence is more than an hour's drive outside the city. This means Harb has been able to claim more than $30,000 in living expenses for the time he spends in Ottawa. But this real estate document tells a different story. It was signed when Harb claims he was living outside Ottawa but it lists a condo unit near downtown Ottawa as the address where he can be reached. Today, Senator Harb didn't want to talk about his living arrangements. Sorry, Senator Harb, just a quick moment. Senator Harb, can you speak with us for a quick moment? Senator Harb, can I ask you about your primary residence, please? But stories like Harb's have prompted the Senate to launch an audit that will force senators to back up their claims for the housing allowance. You swear that this to be true, so not telling the truth is, is committing perjury, uh, or the same as committing per perjury and, and leaving you open to a criminal offence. Senator Jim Munson, like Harb, is a long-time Ottawa resident, and he doesn't claim a housing allowance. Other senators are not comfortable with some of the stories they've read about their colleagues. Just because you have an allowance, you don't necessarily have to spend the allowance. Questions have also been raised about Mike Duffy. He owned a house in Ottawa before he was appointed to the Senate. He still has it, but now claims his principal residence is in PEI, so he gets a living allowance for the time he spends in Ottawa. But when this audit gets underway, Duffy and every other senator will have to prove they live in the place they call home. Donna? They must own property in their province or territory and must reside in the province or territory they represent. 
Brazo is appearing tonight before a Senate committee to give his side of the story. He's coming armed with speeding tickets, tax bills, and other mail, all addressed to him in Manawaki, which he says is his permanent home. I make it up there uh, once or twice uh, every month. I spend a lot of time there during the summer because I do hunt and I do fish. Uh, so uh, I'm, uh, I'm in the Manawaki area when, uh, obviously, when I claim that I am there. The Senate is going to audit all its members' expenses, forcing them to back up claims for their housing allowance and other expenses. They must own property in their province or territory and must reside in the province or territory they represent. Senator Mike Duffy is fleeing press curiosity by hiding out in the kitchens of some of the region's better restaurants. A not unlikely refuge for the senator when you think of it. Pastry on demand, stacks of creme brulee, you know, that sort of thing. Senator Duffy, could you just stop for us for a second, sir? Doing that rather than meet up with his former friends and colleagues. Here he is exiting a talk last night, sidling by the boiling lobsters and about to sneak past the spaghetti bolognese. Wasn't it Truman who declared, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen? Mike, where does he live? Duffy has caught a hold of the wrong end of the frying pan on that one. He's hiding out in a kitchen. Which raises the question, can a person on a small island be a good senator for that island if he has to leave hotels via the backstairs kitchens under covering fire from veteran Tory sushi chefs? Well, since crawling into the Senate from one of the top rungs on the ladder journalism gave him to get there, Mr. Duffy wants the very self-appointed pride of the fourth estate. Remember his unfair and merciless rerunnings of the Stefan Dion interview stumbles? Mr. Duffy has kicked the ladder back down with a vengeance and threatened boiling oil on those who question his ascent. Police block off the Gatineau, Quebec home where Senator Patrick Brazo was arrested just after 9 a.m. Officers were called here for an alleged domestic assault, but a spokesman wouldn't name the senator as the suspect. We will uh, object to the to his release. So uh, and we will speak with the crown attorney to see if we have enough evidence to lay any charge. Actually, I issued a statement. After a statement to the media confirming Brazo had quickly been booted from the Tory caucus, government Senate leader Marjorie LeBreton wouldn't comment. We're told the prime minister was appalled and saddened. Understanding it, that these are uh, matters of a personal nature rather than the Senate business, but they are very serious, and we expect they will be dealt with through the courts. Brazo is already under scrutiny over his housing allowance claims and questions about income tax exemptions. Known for his salty language on Twitter and defeat in the boxing ring at the hands of Justin Trudeau, he offended many fellow Aboriginals when he was overheard making fun of Attawapiskat chief Teresa Spence. And he pretends he's a spokesman, and he's not. So I don't think he has any... He has no credibility. No credibility in the Aboriginal community. He's a laughing stock in the Aboriginal community. For a man who's spoken out about accountability and violence against Aboriginal women, former caucus colleagues say the allegations are shocking. Well, he's a Canadian, and uh, you are innocent until proven guilty. Um, but if he has harmed a woman and beaten a woman, I hope that uh, he receives the full brunt of our justice system. In accordance with Senate rules, Brazo will continue to collect his $132,000 a year salary unless he's convicted of a crime. Thank you.